Hello. Today I want to show you what all the various parts and features of a base plate compass are and explain what they're for. Now the reason for this is this morning I went online um, and I couldn't find a website or a YouTube video that actually showed you what all the parts are and that includes the compass manufacturers websites not one single website anywhere on the internet gives you details of what all the parts are on a base plate compass and considering that most people use base plate compasses um, it was a bit surprising so anyway <laughs> what I'm going to do first of all I'm going to go through how to use these ones which are standard base plate compasses and then I'll just explain what the extra features are on these ones which are just base plate compasses with uh, a mirror attached. I'll put these down first. Now, <coughs> all large manufacturers make base plate compasses, but none of them actually tell you what all the bits are for. How are you supposed to know when you want to buy a new compass or replace the one you've got? How are you supposed to compare the features online before you make a decision if nobody tells you? Um, <laughs> as an example, let's have a look. This Brunton compass, um, I don't know if you can see that, that has small holes that run along the top edge of the Brunton compass. Now these are EPE holes, but nobody explains what they're for. EPE holes, by the way, are, <laughs> um, if you take, if, you, if you're using a GPS and your GPS tells you that you're a certain, at a certain location, you can place one of the holes on your map, depending on which scale you're using, they've got scales written on them, and you will be somewhere in that hole. So EPE is just estimated position error, et estimated position error, and it gives you a statistical level of confidence in in your GPS position. That's all it does. Um, this Sunto compass, this one curves up at the back because they say it's more ergonomically pleasing, which just means it feels nicer to hold. Uh, but for today, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this, which is just the standard Silver Expedition 4, which is probably the most common compass, um, non-military, that's used when folk are out in the countryside. Um, I'm not on, I just have to say, I'm not on commission or I don't get payments off any compass manufacturers or any, anybody else, in fact. Um, so this is just my personal opinion. All these compasses are my personal property. So uh, let's crack on and have a look at the base plate compass. So I suppose the first question would be why are they called base plate compasses? Um, there's a very simple answer to that is uh, everything is either stamped into, printed on, or attached to this clear acrylic plastic plate. Um, and that acts as the base for the rest of the uh, features on the compass. So that's why it's called the base plate compass. So the first item would be the direction arrow, which is this feature here. This is stamped onto the compass on the base of it. And what that does is once you've taken a bearing, that is the direction that you would follow. You would go in that direction. Or if you're taking a bearing from something, say the corner of a wall or I don't know, the top of a mountain, then you would, that's, you would point the arrow at whatever it is you're taking your bearing from and then take your bearing that way. So that's the direction arrow. The next feature is this, which is this small mark here. This is a luminous pointer, so it glows in the dark. And all that does is it takes the place of the direction arrow if you're using the compass um, in the dark. So you'll be able to see that. And if you're walking on a bearing, you just point that along the bearing and that's the direction that you travel. The next feature are these three right angle marks here with um, numbers written along them. These are Roma scales and they're used to take measurements from a map or you can use them to take UTM coordinates or grid references. I've made a video um, on how to do that so I'll place the, uh, the link to that in the description box. So let's have a look at how you use Roma scales. So this is a 1 to 25,000 map and as you can see, there is a 1 to 25,000 Roma scale. So if you wanted to know how far it was from this wall corner here to the wall junction there, all you do, place your compass, place the Roma scale along the wall from here to here, and then read the numbers on the compass. And as you can see, it shows this wall 
is 425 meters from the junction to the corner. And last but not least with the Roma scales, you can also use any of these Roma scales for taking very accurate UTM coordinates on a map or grid references if you're in the UK. I've, there's a video that I've made on how to do this. Again, I'll put the link in the uh, description box. The next thing to look at is the rotating dial or the bezel. This particular one has degrees marked around the edge. Um, some of them have NATO mills. They tend to be more for military use. The way this works is you say you want to set a particular bearing. Let's say we want to set a bearing of 330. We rotate the dial until it's 330 is at, the at the top. And then if we wanted to follow that bearing, we set off in the direction indicated by the direction arrow. So that's what that is. The next thing to notice are the orienting lines, which are the straight lines inside the compass, inside the dial or the bezel. What these do is these allow you to orient your compass to your map. Let's say you're at this particular wall junction, let's find one, there's a wall junction, and you want to walk on a bearing of 130 degrees. All you do is put the line, the black line, that runs in the center of the uh, the base plate, put it onto the wall junction which is there and then simply keeping it in so it's touching the wall junction rotate the rotate the entire compass until the orienting lines are pointing straight up the map so they're pointing straight north so if you wanted to walk on a bearing of 130 degrees you would go in that direction indicated by the uh, direction arrow so that would be your direction and that's what the orienting lines are used for. So the next item in our clockwise rotation of the compass is this. This is a, a ruler, um, an imperial ruler, so it's done in inches. And you could use that for measuring distances on a map, one to one inch to a mile. So that's what this is. The next item is this thing in the middle here. This is the magnetic needle. Um, it, it, it's, it rotates around an, a frictionless, an almost frictionless bearing, which is here, and it points to magnetic north. I know before anybody starts <laughs> giving comments, it, technically it follows the mag horizontal magnetic flux lines, but let's just say it points to the magnetic north pole. It'll keep things simple. For the uh, needle to rotate, as you can see like that, it, th the base plate needs to be kept reasonably level. If it's like this, it's, it's not going to ro rotate correctly. So for the, to allow the needle to rotate, keep the uh, base plate quite, quite level. The next item doesn't really have any effect on the operation of the compass in most cases, which are these, this little circular, these little circular points there. What they are, they're risers. And if you look at the base of the compass, they're small rubberized silicon um, spots. What they do is they allow you to, when you put the compass onto a map, they stop it sliding around. And they also stop the base of the compass being scratched. If you do move it around on something that's not uh, soft, they stop the compass becoming scratched. So that's risers. Another item which doesn't really affect the operation of the compass is this. This is the lanyard attaching point. It just It's just a, a strong point on the compass that you can attach a lanyard to. It's always a good idea to keep your compass attached to either a pocket or to your rucksack so you don't lose them because they are they're quite expensive. So this is the lanyard attaching point. This arrow inside the bezel or the, the dial is called the orienting arrow which is there. So if you it's used to set your compass once once you've taken a a bearing. Let's say you want to take, walk on a bearing of due south. All you would do is rotate the entire base plate until the arrow is directly underneath the magnetic needle. And that's what the orienting arrow does. If you want to take a bearing, want to follow a bearing of 120, you would rotate the entire base plate until the arrow is directly under the needle again and you would then follow the direction arrow. 
Along this side of the compass here, we have another ruler. Remember, we've got this ruler down here, which is imperial. This is a metric ruler marked in centimetres, and it can be used to measure distance on any metric map. So that's what this is. Inside the dials, you can see these num numbers printed in red, in this case, on this particular compass. And at the end, it says E, declination, and W, declination. These are your fixed declination scales. Um, most people don't use them, but if you want to, the way it works is, let's say that you take a bearing and you want to walk in, I don't know, let's say you want to walk due west. So all you do, and let me zoom out a little bit, oops, on the wrong way, so I've zoomed out. So I want to go due west, so all I do is rotate the entire base plate, and let's say that my the area that I live in, I have a declination of 20 degrees east. All I do before I do anything else is I rotate the entire base plate until the magnetic needle is pointing at the east 20 mark there. And I then rotate the arrow underneath. And then my declination is set for that particular time. Um, honestly, then it's a, there are a lot easier ways to deal with magnetic declination. I've, I've made a, a video, Magnetic Declination Simplified. Again, I'll put that in the description box, a link to that. The next part is this little line here, a small line that you can see as you rotate the dial. So I'm there. Can you see the small line that doesn't move? That is an extension of the direction arrow. So you go, it's, it's got a luminous base, so it illuminates at night, and then you, would, you could use that with the luminous pointer. It also marks the, uh, the place on the dial where the bearing is read. So if you were taking a bearing of 290, you would set it to there. So the index line is directly under the 290. So that's the index line. The next thing you can see on this particular base plate is this circular hole with four crosshairs. Some compasses have triangles, some have squares, but they, they all have the same use. I'll show you how they work. Let's say that you wanted to have, draw a circle around a very specific point on your map. Let's say this wall junction here. All you do is you place the circle over the wall junction and then you use the crosshairs to ensure that the wall junction is directly in the center of your circle and then you take your pencil or a marker and draw a circle around it. These, these lines that you can see drawn onto the uh, base plate which is here and here, these are called, well on the compass manufacturers websites they just call them a line, they're actually parallax lines. Um, a parallax is just you would get a different view of something depending on which angle you're looking at it and because the parallax lines are actually stamped onto the the base of the compass wherever whichever direction you look at this line it's always touching whatever it is on the map so say you wanted to go from this point here to this point here you would place the parallax line directly onto it and then you know that that's the uh, it's it's actually you haven't got any parallax errors and from there you could simply take a bearing and that would give you an a very exact bearing. If this line isn't actually long enough on this particular compass you can use the line that starts here and continues here. It also continues up the 1 to 40,000 Roma and then for some reason it also lines up directly with a number three. So you can actually, sorry, number three on the one to 25,000 Roma. So you can actually use the entire compass as a parallax line. This point here, this circular feature here is a magnifying glass or a magnifier. Um, maps contain lots of very small pieces of information. They spend a lot of time drawing these maps. You can only cram so much information onto a piece of paper so they tend to be printed quite small sometimes so having a magnifying glass actually helps you read it. This small circular depression in the top left of the base plate on this particular compass, on other compasses it will be in different location but this is the label holder. Some specialized compasses such as scientific compasses and military compasses instead of having luminous pointers they'll actually have a decaying isotope such as tritium which will actually make 
certain parts of the compass glow, so they're a lot they're a lot easier to use at night. The label holder would simply have a little radioactive sticker. I haven't got. I'm sure you can get one on Google somewhere. So that's what this little circular depression is. So that's all the features and the parts of a standard base plate compass. The only other thing that all manufacturers will add to a base plate are these. They're, they're mirrors. They make them into mirror compasses. Um, these are particularly useful if you want to take a bearing from something that's a long way away. Say two miles to the top of a hill somewhere or you can see a building off way off in the distance and you want to take a reasonably pre precise bearing. You can use a mirror compass and it will help you do that. Again, all the compass manufacturers build in different things into their mirror compasses um, that they think that their customers will want. Uh, let's have a look and see some examples. As an example, this Brunton compass, as you can see there, they've built in there, there's a spirit level. So when you take a, a sight from some, something, you can actually check that the, uh, the compass is being held level. Um, the Sunto compass, which is this one here, They've put a notch, an illuminated line leading to the notch on the top of the mirror, and that will assist you if you're using a, a mirror compass at night. They've also, if you look on the side here, they've built in a scale on both sides, and they're at different map scales, so you've got 1 to 40,000, 1 to 60, 62 and a half thousand, and 1 to 50,000. What these lines do is you can place them on contour lines and it will give you the uh, slope gradient. It will tell you how steep that particular piece of slope is just by looking at a map. But once again, I'm going to use a silver compass um, just because it has more features than other compasses of this type. I'm not including things like the Brunton Truarc 20, which has lots of features, but they tend to be very specialized. So they're used more by geologists and what have you. I'm more interested in people who go walking and trekking over the mountains. So let's have a look at the mirror itself and uh, see what the features of the mirror are. The first thing you'll notice is at the bottom of the mirror is a hole. All compasses, all mirror compasses have this hole. You can see it there, it's on the inside. Now what that's for is if you're looking up a slope and you want to know the angle, you would point the compass up the slope like this. You would look through the hole up the slope and then you can read the slope angle on this bit. I've made another video, I think it's called slope angle with or without an inclinometer. So if you have a look at that, that gives you a lot more detail um, about that particular little hole at the bottom mirror. I'll put a link again, <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of links. I'll put a link again in the description box. The obvious thing here is the sighting mirror, this thing here. What this does is this allows you simply to look at an object, say I want to take a bearing off a tree over there, I would fold the mirror over, I would then line the notch at the top of the mirror here, up with whatever it is I'm going to take a bearing off, and then rotate the compass at the same time. I'll, I'll show you in a, bit, a little bit more detail, let me zoom in. So let's say I want to take a bearing off the center of those, th the center tree of those three trees. All I will do is hold my mirror up in front of me, open it until it's 45 degrees, and then point the notch and the, the line that runs up the center of the dial. And then I then rotate the dial until, let me get it, let's get it reasonably exact, until the needle is over the arrow it's not, is it? <laughs> it will be in a minute. There you go, that's it. And then all I do, open my compass and simply follow in that direction. And that will give me, take me to the center of those trees. Inside the sighting mirror, there are sighting lines, which is what you would actually look up and then through the notch at. So the sighting line, the vertical sighting line, you would A, line up with something and then you would take a bearing. The next thing on good quality compasses you also have a, a, a horizontal line and what that's for is I just happen to have one of these because <laughs> I always take one of these up a hill. What they do is if you hold the compass at 45 degrees 
So there it is at 45 degrees. And then you then look this way, the cross of the horizontal and the vertical sighting line should be directly inside in the middle of the uh, magnetic needle. Let me zoom in and I'll show you, I'll demonstrate. So here are the lines. This is the horizontal line here on the, on the mirror. And this is the vertical line. So if you close the mirror until the cross made by the horizontal and vertical lines is directly over the center of the magnetic needle, that will give you the ideal position to take a bearing. One thing to bear in mind between, there is a, another difference between a base plate compass and those with a mirror attached. On a standard base plate compass, the index line is here. This is the point, there I'll zoom in, this is the point here, this line is the point at which the bearing is read. On a mirror compass it's different because the, you know, the mirror takes up some uh, space on the compass. So in this case, the index line is there, this small luminous pointer there. So as you rotate the dial, set your bearing, and then you would look just below the index line, which is this point here, and then you would read your bearing at that point. Okay, so that's everything there is to know about the parts of a compass. It's not an instruction video on how to actually use all the various parts. That would take, um, I don't know, 500 videos. But at least now there actually is a YouTube video that tells you what all the parts of a base plate compass is or are. The only thing I haven't covered is things like the declination adjustment screws, the inclinometer and stuff like that, because they're not actually on all compasses. Thanks for watching.